So I just came in from the parking lot to say hi to everybody. So um, uh, I can't wait until I have more cars to park. And I know right now I just have to park my dogs on the couch so everyone can watch the service, right? So uh, we really miss you guys. Can't wait for things to get started again. Oh, I miss seeing your smiling faces, giving everybody the hugs that we give each other every Sunday morning. Enjoy the service. Praise and worship your hearts out in your living rooms and hope to see you soon. Have a good day. Well, welcome everybody. It is great to worship the Lord with you and good morning, Bo. How are you? I'm doing great. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, everybody. It's great to be here with you guys. It is great to worship together. And this is kind of a unique experience, a unique opportunity. Uh, we can right now, you can right now, you can share uh, this service with your friends on Facebook. Go ahead and take some time to do that. And the other cool thing about this is this this kind of gives us a little opportunity where you can you can kind of communicate with us too. So why don't you just share in the comments maybe like where you're watching from? We'd love to hear that. Uh, and then you can even you can even we can't be together, which which is lousy but uh we you could even do a, a watch party yeah. where you're kind of watching with your friends you could do that all right now yeah so if you guys can't comment where you're from if you guys want to comment who you're in your household with so we can see who's all sitting together and enjoying yeah, that's together, a great one. that'd be great hey guys uh this week uh we want to let you know guys starting immediately uh we were going to put out an updated schedule of everything that's going on uh this week and continuing on through uh the end of april and then through may uh, Monday through Friday, we're going to have content online at 7.30 p.m. every night of the week, Monday through Friday. Uh, Monday night, we're going to have Brandon. He'll be up there sharing some awesome things. Uh, Tuesday night, will be Pastor Dave and family sharing worship, some exhortation and being in their household, worshiping yeah. with you guys and together. Uh, Wednesday night, we're going to have youth group uh, online. We'll have it on Facebook. We'll have it on Instagram. Uh, we'll make it available for you guys to share. Uh, make sure your kids are watching. Um, after the service on Wednesday night that I put out the video for, we're also going to have a live small group via Zoom. So if you have any of your teens that want to yeah, that want to be a part of that, uh, please make sure you let them know. Please get them equipped to be a part of that Zoom uh, small group opportunity. A great time for us to be together in community with the kids. Uh, Thursday night, Chris. You're going to be going live with what questions? Ask anything questions, and we're going to do a little thing on prayer, too. That's awesome. Ask him anything, really. Hit him hard with some tough questions. He's a smart guy, um, and if he can't find it, uh, well, he'll find somebody who does. We can do with your phone a friend. Phone a friend. Yeah. And then uh, Friday night, we're also going to be having worship on Friday nights. All this week is be at 7.30 p.m. Tune in, enjoy, let's stay connected while we're apart, and enjoy fellowship online. Right. Well, let's go ahead and prepare our hearts for worship of the Lord. Well, good morning, let's sing. Come on, oh my night. Oh my no, God's been good, good to my soul. Mountain high, valley low. I'm gonna sing wherever I go. Oh my night. Oh my no, God's been good, good to my soul. Mountain high, valley low. I'm gonna sing wherever I go. My God is for me. Against me, I will hold to the plans he has for me. When I'm broken, he will fix me. I will call on the name of the Lord. Oh, my night, oh, my Lord, God's been good, good to my soul. Mountain, valley, low. Sing wherever I go. He's my heart song. In my sorrow, he's my hope and my strength for tomorrow. When the storms rise all around me, I will call on the name of the Lord. Oh, my. Good, good to my soul, mountain high, valley low. I'm gonna sing wherever I go. Oh my life, oh I know God's been good, good to my soul, mountain high, valley low. I'm gonna sing wherever I go. Oh, I got. 
We hope that you are uh, dancing in your living room there. Hey, Rocky, it's good to see you. You have been Man. gone for so, so long. I am so, I am really excited to be here, Dave. I've been waiting to get here and see you guys and elbow bump with you. And I see your congregation's grown since I've been It's here. growing. I'm Look telling at you. that. <laughs> You're going to have some fun on this song or what? I am. I am. We're going to go back a few years. We used to play this one together uh, some years ago down at the uh, the Gandy Dancer. And uh, you brought your harmonica today. I brought the harmonica. Just give him a little taste of that harmonica. Go ahead. That is a very little taste. That is like that is like a tic tac right there. That's all that is. There'll be more. There'll be more later. Hey, here's a song that we could kind of set our hearts on the King who is on His way. Kind of goes like this. Well, there's a blessed time that is coming, and it's coming soon. It may be evening, morning, or at noon. There's gonna be a wedding of the bride Gonna be united with the groom Oh, and we shall see the king Hey, Sean, are you ready? When he comes We shall see the king We shall see the king We shall see the king when he comes We'll hail the blessed hour. We shall see the king when he comes. Come on, they sing it. Hey. Are you ready? Should the Savior call today? Yeah. Would Jesus say, Well done, a good way? He's building a home for the goat, the vine that never saves. And we shall see. We shall see the king. We shall see the king when he comes. He is coming in power. We'll hail the blessed hour. We shall see the king when he comes. Oh, let's play a little bit. Play a guitar for me. Come on, give a hand for your pastor out there. Yeah. Are you ready for the call? Oh, we're, ready. we're gonna crown our Savior King and Lord of all. Yeah. Listen now. Then all the kingdoms of this old world where they'll soon before them fall. And we're gonna see our King when He comes. We shall see the King. We shall see the King. We shall see the King when King Jesus He is coming in power. We'll hail the blessed hour, and we shall see the King when He comes. He is coming in power. We'll hail the blessed hour, and we shall see the King when He 
comes Hey, that was a little more harmonica there. Thank you for <laughs> thank you for doing that. Well, that was too <laughs> Hey, rock this next song. A lot of people have been asking for this song. We're in a uh, we're in a time where uh, the world all around us is uh, kind of going crazy, but we know that God is not. He is our, our hope. People need hope in their lives and their hearts this morning. We're just going to ask you to lead us in this next song, sir. I love you.
There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare your unliving hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of us where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone in your presence Lord Holy Spirit you are welcome come
Lord, let your spirit come and rule and reign today in every home, every office, every vehicle, in the hospital this morning, in the prison this morning. God, let your presence come and change our atmosphere. Lord, not the temperature of the room, the temperature of our hearts today. Would you draw every person to yourself, Lord Jesus? Draw every heart, every man, every woman, every child. Give us a desire, Lord, a yearning to know you more. To discover, God, the plan that you have for our lives. And and, and to call us into joining your mission, Lord. That we can use every gift, every talent, every resource that we've been given. To make your name great, God. To declare your praises among our neighborhoods and among the nations, Father. Thank you, Lord, for drawing and calling every one of us this morning and to knowing you better and knowing you more. Let your presence saturate our lives today. We love you, Lord. We thank you. We give you praise this morning. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody says, Well, thank you so, so much for being with us this morning. Thank you, worship team, for worshiping and leading us in worship. Awesome, awesome job. It is so good to see everyone. Christian, how are you this morning? You doing all right? I'm over here. I'm over here now. I'm I'm just everywhere. Good to see you. Good to see you. Beard's looking pretty nice. And Michael, yours is coming along too. Stick with it. Stick with it. You guys are you guys are rocking and rolling those beards. Well, it's good to have you with us this morning. If you are new to Crossroads Church, we have just seen such tremendous growth uh, in these past seven weeks that we've kind of been online. It essentially we've launched this online campus, and I want to tell you why. It's because of you at home. You're liking, you're commenting, and you're sharing. So if you've not done that yet this morning, please just let us know where you're watching from, where you're participating from, and then just just go up and hit the share button, all right? Because you are allowing God's Word to go out to multiply thousands and thousands of people each week. Come on, give yourselves a hand. You guys are doing an awesome job, church, so keep it up. Don't get tired of doing that. Share this message with your friends, those who are following you, your coworkers your family, all the folks that God has given you in your sphere of influence. Go ahead and share this stream, and and we just want to bless as many people as we can with the Word of God, because we believe if we build our lives on the Word of God, we shall not be shaken. He is the anchor of our souls. He is our hope this morning. So if you're new with us, we'd love to get to know you. You can go online, crossroadsthechurch.com, and fill out a connection card. Just kind of introduce yourself to us, okay? And we just love to be able to know your name and be able to be praying with you and for you. If you've got a prayer request, you can let us know that as well. And, uh, And we're glad that you are part of the family of God. Hey, we're going to receive our virtual offering in just a moment. And I want to thank everyone who's been giving and supporting the ministry, even though we haven't been together. And I'll tell you, during this time of, uh, you know, stay at home and quarantine and all this sort of stuff, uh, we've all seen the news story, so we're not pretending. We've seen, we've seen this, this virus bring out the worst in some people. We've seen that. We've seen the the hoarding of supplies and food and not being able to get things and all that sort of stuff. But let me tell you, we've also seen 
it bring out the best in a lot of people. Our heroes who are on the front lines, our, our doctors and our nurses and our medical staff, you guys are doing an awesome, awesome job. We appreciate that. We're praying for our president and our governor and, and our leaders here locally. We're not, we're not sitting back and just criticizing everything that they do. Leadership is hard especially during a time of crisis. So we're praying for them and asking God to fill them with his wisdom. But I tell you, I've been really, really blessed in the past couple of weeks by a few acts of generosity by young people in our church, people in their 20s. A couple of weeks ago, a young lady uh, gave us a call and she said, hey, I've got stimulus money coming and I don't need it. She said, I'm going to take it and I'm going to divide it into two envelopes. And, and I want you to give it to two people in our community, two families that could really use it. That blessed me. She is a young lady in her 20s. She could have spent that money on anything else. But she decided to give it in the name of the Lord. And then just this past week, I go to the mailbox and I, I pull out a letter. And in this letter, it, it's a heartfelt letter, full page, handwritten by another young couple in our church in their 20s. They just had a baby not long ago. And as a church, we wanted to bless them and, and make sure if they needed anything for that, that beautiful baby that they would have it. So we sent them, uh, you know, some money and said, hey, if you need anything, make sure you get it for the baby. You know what they did? They wrote this letter and they said, God's been good to us. He's taken care of us. We want to give this check back and we want you to turn around and give it to somebody who needs it more than we do. These, they, I know we can sit back sometimes and we can say, oh, you know, uh, church attendance is going down. Not our church, but the church as a whole. And, and there's no faith left in America. And we can say all these things. But I'm telling you, as long as God keeps raising up young men and women like we're seeing, uh, the church is in good hands. The future of the church is in good hands. I love to see those acts of generosity because it's a work of the Holy Spirit within our hearts. So we're going to pray over our offering today. If you'd like to give and support, you can do that in numerous ways. You can go online, crossroadsthechurch.com. You can text to give. You can mail it in, as some folks have been doing. There's even an app called Easy Tithe. You can put it right on your smartphone. The app is called Easy Tithe. Pull it up, type in Crossroads Christian Center. That's kind of our official name. And, uh, and you can give that way. So thank you for all those who are faithful to do that. Let's pray over this offering today. Father, I thank you for the awesome generosity we're seeing. Lord, not just in finances. God, we, we're seeing people serve one another. We're seeing our community step up to the plate, rise to the challenge. We're, we're seeing a lot of organizations in, in our towns, God, just do some incredible works of service to one another. We're seeing our, our, our medical teams, God, and, and all those in leadership, Father, just do some great, great things. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you that we focus on the best. And I thank you for these two young people just recently, Lord, who said, you know, I just want to give this back to someone else who needs it. Lord, would you bless them? Would you let them know, God, that that is a work of your spirit in their hearts? We thank you, Lord, for that generous spirit that we see throughout our community during this very, very difficult time. And God, we do pray that you would turn back this virus, that you would put an end to it, Lord. We speak death to it right now. And Lord, we speak for your life to rise up around this nation and around this world, Father. We pray for our president and our governors, God, and, and all those in leadership down to the local level. God, that you would fill them with the knowledge of your will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you'd show them, God, how to deal with this virus, but also how to deal with the, the issues of our economy and opening back up and all the nuances that, that, that have to be considered. Father, I just thank you that they'll not be led by their own wisdom, their own heart, but the hand of the king is in the heart of the Lord and you turn it whichever way you would have it to go. Would you turn the hearts of our leaders, Lord, towards you and toward your wisdom? We thank you, Lord, for blessing this offering today, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hello, Crossroads family. We are Vernon and Lisa Beitzel. We really miss getting together on Sunday morning. I hope we can see you all soon. Have a great day. We're rebuking fear in the name of Jesus, guys. We hope that you feel our prayers. We can't wait till we can get back together again with you guys soon and worship and praise Jesus. Until then, go out, serve your community, and be blessed. We love you guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>
Hi guys, <laughs> we miss you, we're the Davises. We hope everybody's doing well. Stay healthy, stay safe. We hope to get back soon and be live again. We worship with everybody. We miss you. Bye. We just wanted to say hi to our Crossroads family. As you can see by the background, we're not in beautiful Garrett County. We're down at work this week. Uh, just wanted to say hi, tell everybody how much we missed them, uh, how much we're praying for everybody from church, and, and how much we're praying that uh, this pandemic comes to an end just as quick as possible. But we're really missing all of you, and we just wanted to say we love you so much. Yes, we do, and we just we miss our church family, and we can't wait to it till the day that we're all back together. What a day of rejoicing that will be. i just really looking forward to that time. We love you guys. God bless you and everybody stay safe. We love you guys. Take care. Well, we love you too. Thank you, church family, for giving some of those greetings this morning. If you have not kind of put your name in, in uh, your, well, not your name, I guess I don't need you. We know your name, but if you haven't put your city and state in, we would love to hear from you and see where you're joining us from. We're going to get into part two this morning of a series that we've been calling Fearless. And in this series, we're looking at really some incredible women in the Bible who, uh, who found tremendous courage in their time of crisis. And then that courage allowed God to use them as real difference makers in their generation. This morning, we are going to look at the life of a woman that we call Mary Magdalene. And I tell you, I'm so excited to look into her life with you. She chooses courage in two important times in her life. Number one, she lives through the crisis of the crucifixion, the crisis of the crucifixion. And when others run away, Mary, she stays. And then number two, she lives through the crisis of her own past. And instead of letting her past be her prison, she makes her past her testimony. I'll say that again. The second crisis that Mary lived through and she chose courage through is instead of letting her past be her prison, she let her past be her testimony. Let's jump into God's word together. Luke chapter 8 and verse 1. Luke 8 and verse 1. It says, now it came to pass afterward that he, the he here being Jesus, went through every city and village preaching and bringing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God, and the twelve were with him. The twelve were with him. Remember, Jesus had an entourage before it was cool to have an entourage, okay? But he didn't do it for vain reasons. He traveled with a group of men that he was mentoring because he knew he was only going to have about three years or so with them, so he was pouring his life, his heart into into them, investing into them, so he could then turn the ministry over to them, and they would take the gospel to the ends of the world. And I'm glad they did, because we're here because of what they did. But a lot of times when we talk about Jesus' kind of ministry group, we focus on these 12 men. We forget, though, that women played a big role in the ministry of Jesus. They don't get as much press as the men, but they were there, and they were very, very important to the Lord and his ministry. Look at verse 2 with me. It says, And certain women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom had come seven demons. Out of whom had come seven demons. Now, let me just say this. It's an honor. It's an honor to be in the Bible. Right? I mean, that's a pretty awesome thing to even be in the Bible. Mary is not only mentioned once in the Bible, she's mentioned, this Mary Magdalene is mentioned over a dozen times. So that's, that's a really, really big deal. She is an important woman. But if I was going to be in the Bible, I would probably ask the Lord, Lord, is there a different tagline that can accompany my name? I mean, could it, could it be anything else. I mean, I mean, we hear about David and we call David a man after God's own heart. I mean, that's, that's awesome. We, we think about Abraham and we call him the father of our faith. But Mary, her tagline is, is, is this, out of whom had come seven demons. Lord, couldn't, couldn't we choose something else? I mean, something. But for some reason, God wanted this said about Mary, and we're going to discover why today. 
So this Mary, out of whom had come seven demons, is part of Jesus' ministry team. And there are others listed in verse 3. Look at verse 3. It says, and, and Joanna, the wife of Chusa, was also there. He was Herod's steward. And then there was Susanna. And then I've got highlighted many others. Many others. There's a lot of women who are part of Jesus' ministry here who provided for him from their substance. From their substance. That's, that's kind of important to understand. These ladies were helping to meet the physical needs of the ministry through what we were just talking about at offering time, through their generosity. They were givers. And among this group of generous people was this woman called Mary Magdalene. Now, this is also important to note. Magdalene was not her last name. Okay, it wasn't her last name. In those days, people would use your first name followed by your city or town name as a way to distinguish you. Okay, so it would be Mary uh, of Magdala, but they would just call her Mary Magdalene. Like, you know, Jesus with Jesus of Nazareth. And, and I was thinking, wouldn't it be funny if we did that nowadays, especially with some of the names of places that we have in our tri-state region? What if we were to use your first name and then just use the town name of where you were from? We, we have some funny names in our tri-state region. Actually, I want you to be thinking about some, and, and maybe you could share some right here on the live stream. Be thinking about some of the funny names. Like, I mean, the first one, it's easy, right? Accident. Like, like what if I was just to introduce my friend, like his, his name's Alan, and I'd be like, hey, I want, you to, I want you to meet Alan Accident. It's kind of funny, right? But, but, you know, there's a town in, in Maryland also called Boring. <laughs> boring. So what if, what if I was like, hey, I want you to meet my friend Betty. Boring. <laughs> I don't know how Betty would, would feel about that. You know, there's a place in Maryland called Funkstown. What if we, what if we had Frank Funkstown? It's kind of funny, right? Uh, West Virginia is, is no better. That's my home state. But we got some crazy names in West Virginia. Like we have a place called Big Ugly. <laughs> Here's my friend Bobby. Big ugly. Like, who wants that? Do you know we have a town in West Virginia called Hoo Hoo? <laughs> I, can't, I can't even say it without laughing. Here's my friend Helen Hoo Hoo. <laughs> this is what they did in the Bible. They take your first name and then the town where you're from. You know we have a place in West Virginia called Looneyville. <laughs> Larry Looneyville. This one, I don't even know if I can say this on the radio or not, but apparently we have a, we have a town called Booger Hole. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you guys might have to edit this from the live stream, but like Billy from that place. But listen, Pennsylvania folks, don't, don't get all uptown on me because you got some town, name, some town names in, in Pennsylvania that are weird too. Like you had Betty Burdenhand. Who named this place? Or you, there's a town called Forty Fort. Here's my friend Felicia 44. That, I mean, that's just a crazy name. And I, I do like this one. There's a town in Pennsylvania called Noodle Doozy. <laughs> Here's Nancy Noodle Doozy. But probably the best one, and this is from my friend Charlie. Charlie, there is a town, your, it's probably your hometown in Maryland called Crapo. All right, so if you know any funny names or towns or street roads or anything like that, type them in, and maybe we can read some of them if the guys remind me in the back. But we have this woman, and, and, and she's Mary of Magdala, and that's an important part of her description because Magdala was a prosperous fishing town in her day. And again, her tagline is that Jesus cast seven demons out of her. And, and to be honest, when I've read uh, about Mary over the years, I've read some things into her life that aren't there. <laughs> I, I've pictured Mary as perhaps a homeless woman. Perhaps a homeless woman. Her, her hair is all crazy and her eyes are wild. Maybe, maybe she's an abused woman. Maybe she's a, a poor woman. Maybe she's an addict. She's living out on the streets. I, I've read some things into Mary's life that really aren't there. You know what? I'm not the only one. I'm not the only one. We've had entire denominations who have portrayed Mary as being a prostitute, an immoral woman in you know what? That's, that's not in the Bible. It doesn't tell us that about her. Uh, there's been a lot said about her. Uh, years ago, there was a movie called The Da Vinci Code. And if you watch that movie, it portrayed her as being the wife of Jesus. Hello, Jesus was not married. Don't get your uh, theology from movies. Somebody say amen. Thank you. All right. So there's just been a lot said about her that, that it's not really fair. 
And I don't know if you've ever tried to live down a bad reputation or not. But it can be hard to do. It can be hard to do. I know there are people listening to us today. And in your life, maybe you didn't have the greatest start in your life. And, and now you've come to the Lord and, and you're trying to embrace this new life. But you know what? There's some folks who just will not let you live down your past. Mary, Mary, there's a lot of stuff said about her. But I want to encourage you. As, as she's going to show us, keep seeking Jesus. Keep seeking Jesus. He can take your past and turn it into a testimony. So here's what the Bible does teach about Mary. It describes her as a woman of means. She's got, she's got some money. She's a well-put-together woman from a prominent area, but yet her life is still dominated by darkness. And I think this is important to note because it reminds us that no one, no one is exempt from the attacks of the enemy. We could say it this way. Pretty people get demons too. Pretty people get demons too. In fact, I'm con convinced that there are many prosperous people People with nice clothes and nice homes and nice bank accounts and nice makeup who are suffering today because our minds are tormented with things like fear. Even though we're not really told about the outward signs of Mary's sufferings, we can assume that, that she was suffering like many of us do. She was suffering on the inside. She was suffering in silent. She was suffering in secret. Friends, I know this is a little bit uncomfortable to talk about. But demons and demonic activity, those things are real. And you know that. Demons are roaming fallen angels who often attack us with mental and emotional torment. Do you know why this is, this is why our church has been so intentional about pushing back on the fear that has been generated by the corona crisis. It's not because we don't take the crisis seriously. We certainly do. But we know that fear is a magnet to the demonic. And we don't want to see people tormented in their minds by a spirit of fear. You see, fear is reality minus God. Faith is reality plus God. We'll say that again. Fear is, is reality minus God. Faith is reality plus God. So we're not denying the crisis or the virus, but we're taking reality and we're adding our God to it. And we believe he will uphold and sustain us through every crisis. I wish somebody would say amen this morning. Mary was a woman with her share of suffering, but at some point, we're not told about it, but, but she has this encounter with Jesus and he sets her free. And then you know what she does? She doesn't just go enjoy her life. No, no, no. She does what all of us are called to do. She joins the mission of Jesus. And she becomes quite possibly one of his most devoted followers. We're going to see that Mary is the friend who stayed. Even in the darkest times of Jesus' life, she stayed. As he dies on the cross, Mary is there. Let's read from Matthew 27 together. Matthew 27 in verse 50. And it says, and Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and he yielded up his spirit. This is, this is when he's dying on the cross for me, for you. And it says, then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom and the earth quaked and the rocks were split and the graves were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised and coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. So when the centurion and those with him uh, who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and the things that had happened, they feared greatly. And they said, truly, truly, this was the son of God. And then verse 55, look at this. It says, and many women who followed Jesus from Galilee ministering to him were, were there looking on from afar. And among whom were, first one in line, Mary Magdalene. Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's sons. You'll notice, we're not told of any male disciples here at this point. The guys, they're gone. They're hiding. They're scattered. 
because they were afraid they were going to be killed with Jesus. And listen, it was a, it was a scary time for all, all of them. And most of us, we, we couldn't blame them for their self-protection. But yet Mary pushes back against her own fear and she follows Jesus to the cross. Can you imagine how difficult this was for her? Not just because she was endangering herself. Remember, she's a prominent woman. People know who she is. They could have very easily called her out. So she's got to deal with those fears. But she's also got to stand there and watch her friend, her Lord, her Savior, her teacher, her master suffer and die. The others run, but Mary stays. Verse 57 Now, when evening had come, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who himself had also become a disciple of Jesus. He kind of gets there when when everything's over. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate commanded the body to be given to him. When Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his new tomb, which he had hewn out of the rock. And he rolled a large stone against the door of the tomb and departed. Now watch this, verse 61. Again, and Mary Magdalene was there and the other Mary sitting opposite the tomb. So not only does she endure the cross, But here she is at the tomb, and most likely it was her and the other women who helped Joseph take him off of that cross and wrap his body in linen and then lay him in that grave. Her Lord is dead, and she's still there. She's still serving Jesus in love. I'm inspired this morning by Mary's devotion, and I'm challenged by her courage. I want to be like her that's awesome she's still there she's there at the cross she's there to watch him suffer she helps take him off the cross and put him in the tomb and then let's go to john 20 the next day john 20 and verse 1 it says now the first day of the week this is sunday morning who's there again mary magdalene She went to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. And it says, then she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved. More than likely, that's that's John. And said to them, they've taken away the Lord out of the tomb and, and we do not know where they've laid him. And look at verse 11. But Mary stood outside that tomb weeping. She's crying and, and she, she wept. She stooped down and, and she looked into the tomb and she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain. And then they said to her, woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, because they've taken away my Lord. They've taken away my Lord and I don't know where they've laid him. Now, when she had said this, she turned around and she saw Jesus standing there. Can you imagine just for a moment? Oh, just for a moment, use the power of of the gift of imagination this morning. And just imagine being there on that early Sunday morning. It's not even really bright and light out, and it's it's misty, and it's dark, and her heart is broken, and she's trying to find the body of her Lord. She's still pursuing him even after his death, and and she can't find him. And and then she turns, and, and, and there's somebody, but she doesn't know it's Jesus. She thinks that he's the gardener, and she looks at him, and now she's got a little attitude and she says sir if you've carried him away tell me where you've laid him and and, and I'll take him away she said I want to treat his body with the honor that it deserves in verse 16 wow I love this verse verse 16 Jesus said to her Mary I get goosebumps every time I read this story can you imagine the risen Christ speaking your name And and when he said her name, immediately her eyes were open and she knew who it was. And she said, Rabboni, or Rabboni, which means teacher. She's like, that is the teacher. That's the one. Mary knew that it was him when he said her name. Wow. My friends, do you know why Mary was the first person to encounter the risen Christ? Because she was the first person to look for him. What? Why, why does Mary get the reward of being the first person to experience a risen Jesus? She found him 
first because she pursued him first. The rest of the disciples, they're huddled in fear. They're locked behind doors. But Mary is still pursuing Jesus. I heard a preacher say this many years ago, and it has stuck with me, and it's true. We get as much of God as we want. We determine how well we get to know him. Our personal relationship with Jesus, it's not based upon our grandparents, not based upon our parents. It's not based upon our church or our brother and sister in church or our spouse or our kids. We get to know Jesus as much as we want to. I don't necessarily think that Jesus had chosen Mary and favored her above his own other followers. But I think she was rewarded by his presence because she was pursuing him. The reason that Mary had courage in her time of crisis is because she just kept going after Jesus. And friends, I want to tell you this morning, if we want to have courage in our time of crisis, we just need to keep looking for Jesus. He is our courage. He's not a far off, distant, unknowable God. He is here now. He is our ever present help in our time of trouble, our time of fear, our time of depression. If you want to have courage in crisis, just keep pursuing him. Mary's there. At the cross. She's there at his burial. She's there for his resurrection. There's an old song that that we used to sing. Were you there? (laughs) When they nailed him to the tree. Yes, Mary was. Were you there when when they laid him in the tomb? Yes, she was. Were you there when he rose up from the grave? Yes, she was. She just kept going after him. I want to be like Mary. Now. Look at what Jesus says to her. Verse 17. Jesus said to her, do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father. Now, this is a a whole teaching in its own that he that he had to go and take his blood and uh, present himself like that. uh, That high priest would and and smear his blood on the mercy seat. It's It's a great teaching. Maybe we'll do it sometime. But but I want you to I want to really focus on this part as we kind of wind down the message today. And and this is what he says to Mary. And he says, you spread this, Mary. You preach this message. I am ascending to my father and your father to my God and your God. I love this. Jesus, the holy and anointed, risen and exalted one, the sinless son of God, the essence of perfection, the name that's above every other name, the prince of glory, looks at a woman who had once been controlled by seven demons, paralyzed with fear, tormented by sin, looks at her and says, Mary, I'm going to my father who is also your father. Friends, I hope we can see how powerful this is. Mary goes from being a demon-possessed woman to Jesus looking at her in the eye and saying, Mary, me and you... We got the same daddy. That's the power of redemption through the blood of Jesus Christ. Listen, to to compare their two lives, it doesn't even feel right to say it, but it is right. For me to stand here today with a microphone and preach doesn't feel right, but it is right. For our worship team to stand here and lead us in these songs, we're broken, imperfect people and lead you into the throne of grace, the holy of holies. It, sometimes it doesn't even feel right, but it is right. Do you know why? Because he made us right. He who knew no sin took us who were nothing but sin, and he made us righteous in the eyes of his Father. And he says, Mary, I know you used to be controlled by seven demons, but I've redeemed you. I've given you new life. And now, Mary, you and I, we share the same dad. That's the power of the gospel. Last week, we looked at the life of Deborah. Deborah, there's nothing said bad about Deborah. And this is a woman who has more titles than can fit on, on, her, uh, on her business card. She's called a prophetess. She's called a poet. She's called a wife. She's called a warrior. She's called a judge. 
But this week, today we look at Mary Magdalene, and here's her title, The Woman Who Had Seven Demons. Now, we might look at that title as shameful, but I don't believe the Bible calls her to shame at all. I believe that tagline is her testimony. The Bible doesn't say this and include this description about her to, to, to put her down or remind her of her past. It, it repeats it several times to celebrate her freedom. And when you begin to see that Jesus can take any of us, any of us, any of us, listen, everybody listening today, Jesus can take any of us and he can deliver us, he can redeem us, he can give us a brand new life. If, if we really understand that, there's no shame in where we've been. In fact, our past simply becomes our testimony. In my heart this morning, I believe there are people listening who need the courage to embrace new life. You, you've, been, you've been living confined by your old reputation. You've been living in shame. You've been living in a prison of condemnation. But today Jesus is calling you to choose courage and embrace your new life. Let me tell you, one of the saddest things I hear, and I hear it so many times, someone will come into the church or I'll meet someone in the community and we'll be talking and, and they'll, they'll say things like, you know, I know God has forgiven me, but I, but I just can't forgive myself. I've heard that more times than I can recount. Or they'll say, you know, I made some, I made some, some bad mistakes and, and, and we live in a small town, Pastor Dave, and, and people just won't let me live down my reputation. Listen, I know that's real. I know there's our real struggles that we deal with. But I'm going to tell you, so we sang in that song a little while ago that our shame is undone. Jesus gives us this brand new start and, and Mary is this glowing example that no matter where you come from and what you've done, you can not only come into the family of God, but you can be used by Him. You can be used for His glory. I'm speaking to someone today and you've been living confined by your reputation. You've been living in your shame. You've been living in a prison of condemnation. But today Jesus says, would you come to me? Would you choose courage and embrace your new life? Let me redeem you and make you a trophy of my grace. Today we talked about a woman that struggled with mental and emotional torment. And, and I know some are struggling today. I want to pray for you in just a moment. And if, if, this, is, if this is you, listen, I, I've, I've struggled. We all have. This is, this is not a, a, admitting our need for God. That's not a sign of weakness. That's always a sign of wisdom. Today, if you need prayer, lift your hand right there where you are. Comment, pray for me. What, whatever you need to do, take some sort of action step. Reach out to the Lord. And then, and then we're going to pray in just a moment, but I'm also going to say this. I'm also going to say this. this. This time of quarantine and stay at home and all that stuff reminds us of how desperately we need one another. We're not designed to, to be alone. God said it, opening book of the Bible, it's not good for man to be alone. The Bible tells us over and over again not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. And I, I know we've done that for, for this short period of time, but I know a lot of people are lonely today. And listen, you probably know someone in your life and you know that they're struggling with depression. You know that they're struggling with some mental anguish. Would you do this today? Would you do it in the name of the Lord? Would you just call someone today? Would you just call someone and just say, hey, hey, I'm just thinking about you. You're on my heart today. You're on my mind today. I was praying for you today during church, and I just wanted to give you a call and see how you're doing. I'd love to see hundreds and hundreds of phone calls made throughout our church today. Just call somebody. Maybe, maybe they don't attend our church, but they're, they're a member of your community. They're a co-worker. They're a friend. Call them up. Say, hey, hey how are you doing? And maybe, maybe you're the person. Maybe you're really, really struggling. Don't wait for someone to reach out. You make a call. Just, just call somebody today. Disguise it like you're concerned with them. Say, hey, I was thinking about you. Even if you're the one with the need, it's okay. God has given us these beautiful gifts in our lives called people. And he uses one another to express his love, 
to give peace, to give hope, to share our courage in times that we feel weak. Make a call today. Reach out to someone. And let's pray right now. Let's believe God together. Lord Jesus, you're high and you're lifted up this morning. You died and you rose from the grave. And when you did, you proved your authority over every demonic force, over every force of darkness. God, as we read about Mary's life this morning, we're inspired that you were able to do such an incredible work in this woman and then use her over and over again. And 2,000 years later, we get to read about her testimony. God, there are people in our church right now, there are people listening. They want to have that testimony. They want to have freedom. So, Father, I pray over the minds of everyone who've joined us this morning. I pray that we would all have sound minds. Lord, that we would be filled, Lord, with thoughts of peace and love and truth and and father for those who are being bombarded with fear or shame or darkness today would you break every chain of the enemy and set us free from this torment God and father would you help each one of us to embrace our new lives in you help us not not to see our past as a prism to God but but to see it as a testimony that yeah there there might be a tagline there might be a tagline about Dave that that I'm not all that proud of but when I bring that into the lens of the gospel and what Jesus Christ has done in my life then there's no shame there's no fear there's no guilt there's no condemnation if someone reminds me of that past I can say yeah but I'm not that person anymore I'm brand new in Jesus God, give us all that testimony. Thank you for taking shame and making it undone this morning. We give you thanks and praise. Make us your fearless men and women who choose courage in our time of crisis. Thank you for your strength today, Father. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Friends, please, please do that today. Reach out to someone. Call them. Check on them. And if, if you're lonely, if you're hurting, pick up that phone. Call somebody. God's got some people in your life. I know he does. Don't, don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed. Just reach out to them. Feel the strength that we can give one another. And let's let God use our lives for his glory. We're so thankful that you joined in with us today. I want to remind you to stay tuned every day. We're, we're just putting out new content, fresh content every day. Uh, we've got some things that we're going to share with you tomorrow. Kind of a big announcement tomorrow. We'll be putting out a video and, and some information on that. So stay tuned to our, our social media uh, sites. We're really, really excited about that. We're excited about what God is doing. Even in these difficult times, we can see his fingerprints, his hands all over the place. And he's doing some incredible things. And he's using his church to do it. We love you. Be blessed. We are dismissed, everybody. Thanks again for being with us. Hey, everybody. Thank you for worshiping with us today online. Thank you, Pastor Dave, for that message. Hey, I want to remind you guys to stay connected with us Monday through Friday at 7.30 p.m. throughout the week. And check out, kiddos, check out today at 4 o'clock online. There's a special service just for you. God bless you guys.